Next up on YoTV, we're going to be talking about the gang injunction. Um, there was a protest. We're going to be showing you some footage from that. Uh, also, a tattoo removal parlor um, out in the mission. And <laughs> we're going to chop it up with Omar. Omar. Yeah, did I? He's from the mission. Mm, where they have the best food ever. Up next, YoTV. <laughs> Good burrito. Oh, boy, yeah, we YoTV, we back here. Youth culture, youth voices, youth power. What's happening? We on TV out here. Before we go any further, I have to dig up the magazine. You gotta look at the Yo TV, we are back and we are here to inform you about what's going on in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. I'm Anne, this is Donnie, and today we are discussing the gang injunctions taking place out in the Mission and also in the Fillmore, which we are at right now. Right at one of the borders, kind of. <laughs> we're Everything in the, that way is kind of in the zone. The safe area. So um, we're going to go ahead and take you to a protest. We talked to Nancy Hernandez, she's from Homie, and she's also helping to uh, organize out in the Mission. And we also talked to Daniel Landry. He chops it up about what goes on in the Fillmore. He says he's the originator of uh, King Originals. Anyways, go ahead and learn more about it right now on Yo TV. Dennis Herrera, who's the city attorney, he has proposed a series of gang injunctions in San Francisco that will um, kind of establish safety zones, was what he calls them, in certain neighborhoods that have had conflict and had like a lot of um, violence going on. So what his proposal is, is that within the 60 block radius in the mission, and then also in Western Edition, they're going to enforce the same thing that they've started to enforce already at Harness Point, which is basically... Um, creating a list of people and then saying that those people are gang members and that the people who are on that list are not able to gather in groups of three or more, not able to wear colors. Racial profiling is going to be legal in the Mission District if the gang injunctions are passed. Young people will be able to be stopped on the block and asked for their paperwork just based on if they're wearing a certain color. And right now, because I work at a prevention program that is trying to mobilize people who were once a part of that street culture, to actually go into the schools and go into the neighborhoods and work with these young people. Stop them from trying to kill each other and empower them and organize them, give them resources. That's what we do every day. That's why we're on that block every day. So if the gang injunction is trying to stop us from being on that street doing outreach, it's going to cost this city a detriment. If people are scared to be on that street, it's going to cost this city more lives. Now I remember when I was forming KO. I extend a welcome invitation to Mr. Herrera. You need to meet with those who are ex-gang members. You need to meet with those who form these groups that you say is out here that's causing a muck. And KO does not stand for knockout. KO stands for King's Original. Chaos came and was birthed out of pain of young black men that was denied education, that was denied employment and led us to the block. Who gives Mr. Herrera the right to define what's a game? I am a part of KO. And I send an invitation to Mr. Herrera. If you want to send down any type of filing, come get me first. If you get served with the injunction, if you get served with notice, your recourse is to go to court. But guess what? You don't have a right to a lawyer. So your recourse is either to go to court and be convicted for all practical purposes of being a gang member without a defense or not to show up at court at all. There was a study based on the police department's own statistics that showed that Latino and black individuals were three times as likely as whites to be stopped, even though they were less likely to reveal any evidence of crime. And if we're just going to say no on the gang injunction, at the same time, we want to propose something. We don't want to just be reactionary. And we want to actually, you know, make an impact on this issue. So we asked people from the neighborhood. We asked them, so what is your proposal? Like, what do you think would fix the problem? We held two, two town hall meetings. The first town hall meeting was, on six, was near 16th. The second town hall meeting was near 24th. And a lot of the answers that came out at both of those town hall meetings were that we need to have more sports programs. We need to have more after school programs. We need to have jobs for young people. We need to have affordable housing. We need to have the services to support 
support people to be able to survive in the Mission District. And we asked young people, what are some of the things that have um, been a positive impact on your life? What are some of the things that have stopped you from banging? What are some of the things that have empowered you as a young person? Who do you look up to? The OGs, people that we grew up, like everyone that knows what's going on. I look up to the OGs too. Like, I grew up around them, so like they became like family, like uncles. The, to me, I see them as like deals and everything. So I respect them, and I listen to what they say most of the time. Young people look up to the OGs, and if we can organize the OGs to actually be saying something positive and doing outreach to get kids to go to college and doing outreach to get people to get jobs and, and do positive stuff, rather than t them taking that leadership potential that they have and turning it towards some criminal activity, like that's what can really fix the problem. Yo TV, right now we are in the middle of the gang injunction safety zone in the Mission District. It takes up about 60 blocks and it is a form of an L. Le <laughs> hey, sir. Anyways, um, we are in front of the tattoo removal shop where you can get it all laser removed. Yeah. and. When transitioning outside of uh, the gang life, a lot of people decide to remove some of their visible uh, gang tattoos. And it's important because in case they're immigrants and get deported, um, if they get shipped out back to, you know, down south in Latin America. Mm. Pretty much makes them a target. Exactly. Yeah. So we go. We went ahead and talked to Roberto and Henry, and you get to see more of it up next for you on your TV. I am hanging out with Henry right now, and he is here to help you get rid of those gang tattoos so you can stay out of trouble. Let me know a little bit more. Like, where can we go to get this done? What Do, do people cry when, when they get it removed? Look. I ain't gonna lie, it does hurt. But you know, if you got a tattoo, you weren't a poodle to begin with, right? <laughs> so you can actually handle a little bit of pain. And what it is, we're on 24th in Alabama, at 1245 Alabama, and we help people remove their tattoos. I have them on their neck, on their eyelids, up here, anywhere that's pretty much visible that makes it hard for somebody to go back to society, get a job, go back and just go into the community and not have any problem with anybody. Well, unfortunately, we have this racial gang injunction motivated by politics and gentrification. So for us as a tattoo removal program, it affects us two ways. One way, a lot of our clients are trying to get the tattoos off ASAP. Second way is that we're in the middle of the gang injunction in the zone, right in the, in the, in the middle of it. So young people and, and people that are older are scared to come get services because they feel the police are going to come harass because they patrol our agency. Young people, that they may go to jail for having these tattoos. And if they're immigrants, they get deported because regardless of what the city says, if you're an immigrant and you get caught up in this gang injunction and they put you in A50 Bryant, ICE can put a hold on you. And once ICE grabs you, that's it. They're a federal agency. The city has no say-so at that point. And they can grab you and then they deport you. And that's what we're scared of as we watch this injunction happen. And we're in the middle of the L section where this gang injunction is being implemented. A majority of our clients and our staff are being handed these injunctions as if they've already been implemented, like they're already in effect. And our population of immigrant youth that we work with are totally being affected because this injunction will lead directly to deportation. They go through immigration, they go through the deportation, they get to, let's say, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, uh, Nicaragua, and even Mexico. They're marked as soon as they come into that country. They are photographed, all the tattoos of theirs are taken pictures of, there are files created for them, and if they get caught up in the negative street activity that, well, you go back to Latin America is prevalent with a lot of the youth that are being deported. You wind up dead. You know, there are, there are different legislations being pushed through the governments down there that are okaying this type of movement towards the youth that are being deported from this country back to Latin America. Uh, there's a thing called La Mano Dura. It's called the hard hand is a translation, little translation of it. And it is a no-nonsense approach to dealing with the gang epidemic down there. And how do, you do, how do they deal with it down there? A lot of it is done through violence. You know, they counteract it by murdering a lot of these kids. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do is trying to expand our program to possibly access those youth that are about to be deported so that we might be able to give them a second opportunity when they reintegrate into the Latin American, um, into Latin America where they're being deported to. Are the tattoos free to get removed? Um, do you have to pay? Do you get city funding? How does it work all, out? All our services are free to the community. What we do ask of you though, is for you to go back to your hood, in your hood, and do community service, work with the youngsters, talk to the youngsters, work with the youth, and kind of like get them, talk to them about the things you've gone through and what they shouldn't go through and the experience it was having that you were just living a, a, a real hard life and telling them about that life and telling them not to walk down that route. We have a multitude of, of 
success stories from individuals who've got them removed, who got themselves very high paying jobs and have moved away from the street activities that they were involved in as youth. My nice gang tats. These are my parents, I mean, I mean my gang, my gang leaders. Yeah, they like to bake uh, brownies and stuff and do other uh, mean things to people. Don't forget like the grounding them. Yo TV, we are here in the Mission District hanging out at 24th and Cap in front of this beautiful mural that Homie helped to create. Has a lot of positive messages out there, makes you think. And I'm next for you, we are gonna introduce you to Omar. He did a beat diary with us, which is put on by the Beat Within. It helps to, um, helps like people who were once in the system, which Omar was, to transition into a better lifestyle through um, art, poetry, and all those kinds of good things. So go ahead and meet him up next for you on your TV. My name is Omar Tercios. People call me Casper though, the unfriendly ghost. And I'm um, 18 and a half. And um, I'm, I was raised here in San Francisco. When I was smaller, I used to um, be by the uh, candlestick a lot. So we would get to hella fights and stuff. Hella racial fights too, like it would be the Latins versus the black people, you know, like, you know. I remember I was a little kid and stuff, and uh, my cousins, cause my cousins, that's like a gang infested area. My cousins were gangbangers and stuff. And they always used to like come, bring people to the house and stuff. So I seen like gangs and stuff hella early. Like, in sixth grade, I used to like hang around with gangbangers too. But then like in seventh grade, like when I got to, I, I kind of, I was like, you no, know, I, I kind of laid back. Like I laid back, I was like, cause you know, I don't want to like cause any problems for my mom, you know what I'm saying? So I laid back in seventh grade. I was still, and I, I don't know, I was doing pretty cool in seventh grade cause I was still playing baseball or whatever. And uh, I mean, I still had like, I was like a little a thug mentality, you know, like, I, cause I, I like to fight, you know what I'm saying? And then eighth grade, eighth grade, I don't know, I started kicking it with some, some like older heads, older heads, like OGs and stuff. And I did dirt with some of them too. Like, I was still doing cool. Like I was still going to school though, at least, you know what I'm saying? And it, Man, that's a, I was a slick, man. You know, I was slick. I was, I thought, and to keep it real, I thought it was slick too. Like, the more you, the thing, like, if you, I think if you think you're like slick and stuff, that's when you get caught because uh, that's what I, I used to say, oh, I'm never getting caught up. Look, I got caught up. I don't, I don't even know who the fuck robbed some dude by my house. But I was there, like, they didn't rob him. Like, they just went up to him and punked him for his boombox. So then the police came to my school. And they were like, they tried to say I was the one that robbed it, or if it wasn't, I didn't know the guy. Or like the hall was weak. I hate, I hate people telling me what to do. No, you know, not even my old mom telling me what to do. You know, I was gone for like about a year and a month. Everybody thought that I was gonna change into a church boy or something. Like, man, it's not really that long to even just change. I mean, I developed mentally, like. I learn stuff and everything, but it's not like I completely change, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just doesn't take one year and a month for a person that been doing what, stuff that they've been doing for like 16 years, it just changes. I came out the hall with time still to do, like this is spending my time, and they wanted me to do a whole bunch of stuff that was really impossible. I think from there I got the mindset like, man, like, forget these people, like, man, they just trying to uh, bring me back to the halls, they don't care what's going on out here. So I was like, man, I'm just gonna do what I kept doing before. Cause if I'm gonna go back, whether I'm doing good or not, then you know, it didn't really matter. Yeah, I think everybody judges me regardless. Like, <laughs> and they're gonna judge me. See, that's the hard, hard part of going, doing, doing, like going straight. If I decide to go straight, I don't think I'll get hella, hella supporters. I, I mean, I'll get support, but then people are always gonna throw back what I've done. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, man, I'm trying to go this way, but people keep talking about what I was doing when I was going this way. It's almost the same thing, because I'm always out in the city, and I always pass by the hood or whatever, and I got the same friends, so we still go kick it. And it, it kind of got a little worse, not a little worse, but like, I mean, the area ain't bad over there, but there's people over there that don't like me, and I don't like them, so <laughs> I live real close to them. Just imagine somebody you don't like, and they don't like you, and you just move like a block away from me, you know there's gonna be confrontations and stuff, so. Man, I was out on the block and stuff, and I mean, I'm the type of person like that likes to not just sit there, I like to go get in trouble, like go looking for trouble. So I went looking for trouble, and I got in trouble right back with a bullet. 
I got shot in the arm, see? It's gone now. But that's the bullet wound. What are you saying about the gang violence? Still around, cause you know, I still got the same friends and stuff. But it's not just as frequent as it used to be. Or it's not like I look for it now, as much as I used to. We're gonna go to a commercial break. When we come back, we're gonna have more from Omar. He's a native of the mission. He grew up here. He loves this place. Uh, he's going to talk a little bit more about how the changes in the mission are affecting him. So Omar's PO made him sign some papers that would prohibit him from coming around the mission, the place he knows the best, the place he loves. He lives in Daly City now, but he still intends to move back, even with all this gang in injunction stuff going on. So here's his story next. Everybody at that time, you know what I'm saying, back in the day, I guess, when the mission and you're Latin, you have to pick a side or something, you know. But I grew up, you know, I'm a... Giants fan and a Niners fan, so off top I have to rep, you know what I'm saying, I always had my Niner jerseys and Giants hats and you know, all that stuff, so I, I think I was automatically labeled by everybody to see me, you know, oh he has red on, you know what I'm saying, Norteño, you know what I'm saying, everybody thinks I'm gang banging, I might, might as well, you know what I'm saying, gang bang, you know. Well my PO made me sign the paper, and you know, and he was like, pretty much like a contract, like, you know, now he give me heads up, you know what I'm saying? And so basically if I get, you know, I guess if I get caught or something in in there, like I guess I can get violated for probate, you know, probation. When I first came here, I think I lived on like 17th in Valencia, or no, Guerrero. And then we moved to 15th in Guerrero by the VGs. Then I moved down to 26th in Alabama by Garfield Park. And then I lived on 21st and Bryan. And like, just growing up, like I kept moving back and forth everywhere. So it was like, I grew up damn near the whole mission. This is the Terrace, Bryan Terrace building. I used to live here like way long time ago. I'm talking about like about 12 years back or something like that. I'd live here for like, maybe like about a, maybe like a good year, a good year. But I've always lived like within this perimeter, you know what I'm saying, from here, I'm gonna move to upper mission more. Always in the mission though, you know? I feel like this is art, like a Latin community, you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like they, somebody should be kicking us out. I mean, back when I was younger, I know it wasn't that many like, you know, white people in the mission. Mm -hmm. But as you know, the years kept going, it's like the numbers of Latin, Latino people in the mission, like going down, you know what I'm saying? And it's continuing at a pretty fast rate. So by putting the gang junction, and rest in all pretty much Latin community, you know, then, you know, then they're gonna be like, okay, well, we're keeping them off the streets now. Make room for all the rich, whatever folks to come in there and build shops and whatever. We're on 20th in York, and that's the um, slash club bar slash restaurant j and B. I actually I came in here with a, um, one of my boys that's about 26 years old. I'm 22 years old. And uh, another lady friend, and uh, um, as soon as we walked inside the door, the owners came up to us to talk about there's a dress code in there, and you know, and um, if we have ID. I later found out that one of my boys went over there, and he's not even Latin, he's Arabic, and he got kicked out too. And it's just because they don't want, like, you know what I'm saying, young Latin, you know what I'm saying, they don't want Latin people, they don't want that. What I heard is they don't want that kind of crowd in the bar, you know what I'm saying? And now over the years then, with raising rent and all these laws and stuff like that, you know, they've been trying to drive all the Latin people out of, out of the mission and trying to make it another North Beach probably, you know what I'm saying? Has it changed how you deal with in the mission? Or with yeah, like hell yeah. It's not like I'm just on the block chilling. And of course there's like, there's not that many people like that, just around chilling, waiting for the 5-0 to come get you, you know what I'm saying? I just. I go to the normal stores I go, you know what I'm saying, buy my stuff, whatever, eat, whatever, I go hang out, you know what I'm saying. This is between 20th and 21st, between the injunction area, and uh, um, injunction would be on the next block up, next street, next street corner. This is my regular optometrist ever since I've been probably like six or seven years old. It's right around the borders of the gang injunction. Right now I live in Daly City, but if, like, if I want to eat some like good, Latin food, or get a real burrito, or come to any taqueria in the mission. Taquerias over here stay open till like three o'clock in the morning. I eat dinner at ten o'clock sometimes, you know. So if I want to get me some good food, I come out here. 
I mean, people, they're gonna do regardless what they're gonna do, you know what I'm saying? I mean, police ain't ever, I mean, if they think a gang junction is gonna put a halt to any activity, they're wrong. It's just gonna make people get smarter and get up to that level, you know what I'm saying? Where like, okay, they wanna mess with us this way, that we'll find another way to do it, you know what I'm saying? I'm planning on moving back to the mission. And, I, and wh whether the gang junction is gonna fly or not, I'm, I'm still planning on moving over here. This is like closest feeling that I have to home. All right, Yo TV. Hopefully, you have been informed. We're telling you a little bit more about these gang injunctions. Yeah. If you want to learn more, go ahead and check out our website, youthoutlook.org. We also have newamericamedia.org. Get involved. Check out video Google and watch these full episodes of Yo TV. We are almost at 100. That's next week. It's gonna be a good time. Exciting. And um, I'm we'll excited. see you next time, guys. Touch on, uh, oh, I messed it up. Let's do it again. Right. One of the things people do while tr transitioning out of the gang lifestyle is get their tattoos removed. And this is one of the places you can do that. Wait, where are we? Move some of your gang tattoos. Um, it's kind of important. It's an important subject. Um, but the, uh, I don't know what to say either. <laughs> Very difficult. Okay, we'll do it again one more time. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Gabna. Did you see that one South Park? He, he bang bang. No. <laughs> when he, you know, the guy with the voice box. He's like, run, 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 run,